<laughs> well, you know, I think the uh, the thing is that you know Ben Graham, one of his uh, three core edicts that Buffett talks about is that the market is here to serve us, mm -hmm. not to instruct us. Right. And uh, so we should never be uh, trying to kind of look for rationality mm -hmm. in market levels or market prices. Okay. Uh, what we have to do as investors is. Uh, Effectively, forget the market, but look at individual businesses. Yeah. When they're being offered at offered at bargain basement prices, we buy, mm -hmm. and when they're being sold at ridiculously high prices, we sell. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. And we don't particularly care about what's happening with Brent or what's happening with growth or what's happening with an NBFC. All of those are in the noise range. We don't, really don't care about those things. Hey, look, guys. In this clip, Munish will teach us how to outperform the market. In this clip, you will learn 1. Why Ben Graham said market is here to serve us, not to instruct us. 2. Why you should not care about corrections and macroeconomics. 3. Why circ of competence is so important. 4. Why time of maximum pessimism is the best time to buy stocks? 5. What is our job as an investor? 6. Why Monish thinks investors don't know how to value real estate companies? 7. Why you should not look at sectors as an investor? 8. Why Munich don't like auto industry? 9. Why identifying great assets is not enough? You need to look at the price. As Howard Mark said, it's not what you buy, but what you pay for it. And 10. Why Munich invested in rain industries? Enjoy this clip. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done it already. Like I said, I don't particularly care about corrections and, and such. I think in general, when we have uh, situations like we have currently, uh, a number of businesses go on sale. Okay. And as long as an investor can understand the businesses, it's within his, his or her circle of competence and can buy them well below what they're worth, mm -hmm. That's the name of the game. You should be buying at that point and ignore the noise. That's right. So we Explain all, that to us. Well, we all know the story in the Mahabharata about Arjun and Dronacharya and he has this test where he has to shoot the, the eye of the fish looking at the reflection yeah. in the pool of water. We all know that. And, and when Arjun is asked by Dronacharya, what do you see? He says, I see only the center of the center mm. of the eye of the fish. Mm. And Dronacharya says, you know, fire it well. And, uh, and of course, he shoots the eye out. And so the direct analogy there is when we are looking at a specific business and we're looking at the future prospects of a business, we really shouldn't uh, deviate or take our focus away from that mm. into anything else that's going on. Okay. Uh, so I'll give you, I'll give you a very, very simple example. So when we had the unfortunate incidents of 9-11, you know, when the Twin Towers went down and so on, uh, U.S. markets imploded yeah. after that. Uh, one particular company uh, in the U.S. called Stewart Enterprises okay. also went down, like everything else. Right. Stewart Enterprises buries dead people. Did the prospects of Stewart Enterprises suddenly deteriorate mm -hmm. after 9-11? If people were concerned that there were going to be more airplanes flying into more towers, mm -hmm. as morbid as it sounds, their business would have boomed. Yeah. And so there was no rational reason. I mean, so United the, Airlines should have gone down. Yeah. American Airlines should have gone down. Stewart Enterprises should have gone up. Right. It didn't go up. Okay. It went down as well. And so markets gyrate between fear and greed, and they, and they have a lot of irrationality. Our job as investors is not to try to give reason to the irrationality. It's to take in advantage of irrationality. Yeah, I think I think uh, Pabrai funds will do extremely well mm -hmm. and uh, make a lot of hay of our of our real estate bets. Yeah. And uh, and the reason is very simple that mm -hmm. 
the uh, the market or uh, investors really don't pro don't understand how to properly value real estate companies okay so the way a real estate company ought to be valued mm. is and it's not that hard uh, most real estate companies are pretty transparent about their holdings about their debt yeah and so you can you can come up with some kind of market pricing yeah on the holdings okay. you can subtract the debt and you get an asset value you can even discount that in case prices drop and so on yeah. so that gives you what i would call the liquidation value of a given real estate company okay most of these companies that i'm invested in trade at a substantial discount to liquidation okay which means if they shut down their business today and sold their assets we'd get a multiple of what the stock trades at yeah. even in today's market but right. but that's not that's not the way to value the business that's one aspect of the business okay the more important aspect of the business is these companies are factories and the factories are not physical plants they're virtual plants okay and the factories have the ability to keep making deals yeah uh keep cranking out more uh finished product okay and and continue on and so just like with maruti when we value maruti we look at the next 10 or 15 years of revenues and growth maruti we have the same thing we need to do with real estate companies yeah. we have to look at what will what are they possibly able to do in the next 10 or 15 years yeah. and so one of the things that's happened in real estate is that because of rera gst demonetization all of these things 80 to 90% of real estate companies are either gone or on life support and they yeah. will be gone so if i am participating in an industry where 9 out of 10 of my competitors are gone yeah uh, that's a phenomenal place to be yeah. and so i think that the companies that we have we buying we bought them well below liquidation but that's that's not really where the games at the game is about what they do in the next 10 or 20 years all right and if i look at a place like mumbai because specifically i'm interested in real estate in mumbai um it is one of the only places in the world where people live in very expensive housing mm. which is terrible <laughs> the housing stock in this city is terrible mm. and in fact if i take a 30 year or 50 year view yeah. almost the entire city will be torn down and rebuilt and the torn down and rebuilding that's going to happen we're down to about 20 players okay and and so that uh, just think about uh the size of that yeah and it's very hard for new entrants the other thing if you go on wikipedia and look at you know most populated cities in the world let's say in 2050 hmm. number one on that list is mumbai and i know we we think that too many people here today yeah. in 2050 we're looking at north of 50 million it's well so i think i think you know i don't i don't look at things from a sector perspective and i don't think investors hmm. should look at sectors okay. i think the focus ought to be specific businesses yeah because there is a lot of difference in the way uh, a kotak performs versus a jnk bank performs right. i mean the sectors don't mean much i think you have to get down to specific particular businesses and uh, i think i don't i think it'd be a mistake to say that i have an interest in the agricultural uh, sector or i have an interest in the auto sector i get interested in particular businesses with particular nuances hmm. and uh, and i got interested in kaveri for very specific nuances which we will discuss nigel after at some point when we no longer own it which okay. is probably a long ways off so actually as far as the auto industry goes i hate the auto industry mm. i think it's a terrible industry but you have a big chunk in fiat yeah so in uh, 2012 uh, is when we first invested in fiat mm. and from 2012 till now fiat has delivered uh it's about 6 uh, or 7x now at the peak it was about 8 or 9x okay so it's done really well but we bought it basically at one times 2018 earnings so in 2012 we were buying at one time 2018 earnings and that actually came to pass okay and so we were buying a company with 150 billion in revenue mm -hmm. at a 5 billion market cap i paid 130th okay. of revenue uh, so one simple ma uh, you know thing you can look up for maruti after the show hmm. look at the market cap i think it's something like 20 billion dollars mm -hmm. and look at the revenue of the company it's the complete opposite of fiat so maruti is very dominant phenomenal business yeah 
investing is not about identifying great assets. Okay. That's only one part of the equation. We have to identify great assets at great prices. And to me, Maruti is a great asset, mm. but it is nowhere near a great price. So Rain Industries is an interesting company. I mean, uh, we've owned it, I think, for about a uh, little over three years. Mm. And uh, we paid between 30 and 45 rupees in 2015 for our rain position. We own just slightly under 10% of the business. Uh, and I like the business, I like the management. Okay. And uh, Rain was a company which uh, has about $2 billion in revenue. Okay. And in 2015, they were trading at a market cap of 180 million, yeah. less than one tenth of revenue. Look, I told you Fiat was trading at one thirtieth of revenue. Right. Uh, so they were trading at a very small fraction of their revenues. And they are in a business with some cyclicality. Mm -hmm. And the, the cycle was at a, at a very low point, but they're also a low cost producer. So when they have a cold, the rest of the industry has pneumonia. <laughs> and uh, so rain actually would have a hard time losing money. Okay. Uh, because uh, by the time their margins get slimmed down, the rest of the industry starts losing money and capacity gets taken out, which corrects the situation. So in, in the situation with rain, I thought at, in 2015, there was a very high probability that in the next three or four years, the the net income mm. of the business would yeah. exceed the current market cap yeah. and that actually has come to pass so now that it's a company that makes around 10 rupees a share a quarter and we paid about 35 rupees for the stock and uh, so you do the math on that yeah. and uh, so we like the business we like the management we think they're very good capital allocators and uh, we're going to sit in for a while. So I think we have, as investors, we really have two or three issues to be concerned with as far as promoters go. The first most basic issue is, are they honest? Yeah. And is it a high integrity operation? Are they siphoning off the money? Those are, those are the first basic things we have to get past. Mm. So far, I've lost money many times on investments in India and also in the US in 19 years. I've never lost it because of fraud. I've lost it because I was stupid, but not because of fraud. Mm. So the first layer in India, at least, we have to uh, be vigilant on is are we dealing with a high quality, highly ethical promoter group? Right. After that, we have to get to the next level, which is are they great operators? Are they great capital allocators? Are they running the business for the shareholders? What are the compensation arrangements? Those, all those areas. Uh, so we, we need to have a view on all of that. And then more important than all of that is the nature of the business. So there yeah. are some businesses, I mean, if I take a business like Care, a rating agency, or Moody's or S&P, yeah. um, it almost doesn't matter who's running it. It almost doesn't matter who's running Coca-Cola. Right. Uh, these are very strong moats that can withstand even mediocre or poor management. Uh, but they are, that they're the exception. The, the, the norm is that you do need great execution mm. to get great results. And uh, so we have to make sure that we're aligning with promoters uh, that are high integrity, but they also know how to allocate capital and they also know how to execute. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe if you haven't done it already.